Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Is a the last layer that you are seeing here is a namespace. So what I am saying, namespace is nothing but just like a project to isolate the pods, right? So pod will run inside your namespace. So that's what I mentioned. So this namespace is a like a, uh, uh, the last uh, isolation thing that we are the last isolation layer that we are using. Uh, after that, uh, there is a node uh, on that particular node. Node is nothing but a machine, and in that particular node, we have some pods. Okay, we have some pods. Now, what happens when you start some pod? It, it, so, what is pod? Pod is nothing but container or set of containers, right? They are running together to achieve some same goal. So, when I start the pod, first of all, it starts the uh, one container. Okay, whenever you uh, try to deploy some application, it it spawn up one init container. Now, what is this init container? The job, the sole purpose of this init container is to create an environment for your uh, pod. So that means <coughs> like to, to, to create some environment for your pod or uh, all those settings, the init container is required. So whenever I'm deploying some application, first thing happens is like it, it generates some init container. Now that init containers will initialize your main application container. Okay. And now that main application container uh, may have some sidecar container. Now what is this sidecar container? So this sidecar container is nothing but a container uh, that is uh, working together with your application container okay so as the name indicates sidecar container is nothing but a container that will run along with your application container to provide some external variables so just like that as i had mentioned earlier also the proxy so let's say if you want to have some provide some proxy server uh, there like you don't want your application container to be exposed directly so what you will do you will run some application container and together the, with that you will run some sidecar proxy container and this both the containers are part of one pod so it will only have one ip right so how the traffic will flow the traffic will hit to the pod ip and then it will go to the your sidecar container and then it will hit to the application container so this is an example of how, what a sidecar container can do okay now you will be able to notice that there are uh, two probes that we are seeing here one is liveness probe and one is readiness probe okay so this liveness probe is nothing but checks if you are so for that uh, you can think of this like that uh, uh, when a vm is in running state if vm is in running state then this uh, liveness probe will tell that okay everything is good but if vm is uh, when you start the vm and it stops automatically so this live liveness probe will tell that okay this, this has been failed and we have to restart the container so similar thing happens here so this liveness probe means it checks if application container is running or not if it is running then it is fine if not it will try to restart it okay and what is this ready probe so ready probe means is the application ready or not so this liveness probe so what what we are seeing here what we are seeing here let me just uh, try to write it down so that it will be helpful for you to understand uh so let me just write this is fine it's like project so after that we are trying to learn more about kubernetes pod and how it works how it works in the back end so the we have learned about NAND space and then node and now what is init container init container so init container is nothing but it is once the application is deployed application is deployed the init container init container initializes initializes the application container application container and sidecar container sidecar container now what is uh, application container application container is nothing but uh, 
container that contains that contains the application code application code okay and what is sidecar container sidecar container container helps main application container application container to run the application okay so you, you need not to have this site can container every in every application so there might be in some cases the application container container itself will be capable of uh, running the application on its own okay uh, once we have understood this now we are learning about probes what is probe so this is actually very important because when we troubleshoot a failing application we have to check the probes so that is why probes are like two type one is liveness probe and another is readiness probe readiness probe so what is this liveness probe and what is this readiness probe so liveness probe means is the application container running properly and what is the readiness probe is the application application is ready to serve the client serve the clients so liveness probe checks if the application container is running or not and uh, readiness probe checks if the application is ready to serve the uh, serve the clients so that means in some case it may happen that container is running fine that means the liveness probe is okay but in that case it might be a possibility that the application code is somewhat uh, faulty or something like that and it is not serving the on a proper port something like that so readiness probe will fail in that scenario right so this is the basically two props that uh, kubernetes uses uh, yeah, to uh, check the status of your application and now uh, the next thing is so if let's say uh, so if some uh, liveness prop fails uh, then it will try to restart the pod uh, if not if it is success then uh, the application will be uh, application will be available right now there are two more things here so one is asset so asset means empty directory uh, they are saying so this is like a, a storage where all hey viewers our master in devops engineering program can help you to hone the skills necessary to succeed in high level devops positions so what are you waiting for enroll now and earn certification that show you are keeping pace with today's technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now all those files of your particular pod can be stored okay now this uh, as you might be aware the container stores on the all the local data uh, on the node where it is running so this cache or host path is nothing but a place where the container is storing this particular pod is located on this node so it is on the node right and then the persistent volume claim is nothing but uh, your storage that I, I had mentioned so this is like some basic concepts of uh, kubernetes now let us go ahead and uh, let us first check what is the microservice here so for moving ahead so let us check the what is the microservice just give me uh, one minute guys just give me one minute i'll
okay uh, thanks for that uh, so we were discussing more about like what is microservices and all so let's uh, uh, learn about what is microservices basically so in this particular example uh, let's assume that uh, some client uh, wants one application uh, and that application needs to have some features uh, like let's say consider an example of netflix uh, where there are different types of services like uh, you can think of one service as a recommendation engine which will recommend you new movies and all and you can say one engine is search engine which will go ahead and search all those movies that you try to search one maybe uh, the next engine may be uh, personalized uh, uh, what you can say the personalized uh, channel like there are different channels you can create and also something like that so let's consider that there are three types of features the netflix is providing or three types of services that Netflix support. So what happens? You can um, this thing can be achieved using two ways. So first way is like uh, integrating all the code in a single uh, application code and then running it as a sole uh, application. Then what happens? So now you might be aware that there are lots of features that are available uh, when you think of some big application like Netflix. Uh, you can think of so there are lots of features uh, that are available. So what happens if some feature so what we want we want the application reliability so application reliability means uh, whenever i'm trying to access the application uh, the application must be available so let's say if one service uh, plays the video another service uh, uh, is uh, recommends the video and third service is like uh, uh, searching that particular video inside your netflix account so what will happen if i integrate all those th three services in one uh, application so what what might happen that if let's say that particular replica fails or let's say there are some complications with the code all the three services will go down okay all the three services will go down so what i can do instead of uh, using that single application code i can chop uh, those services in multiple uh, layers so like that so what i can do i can create one container uh, and i can create one microservice and I can name it as a suggestion service, okay? And I can run it as a suggestion service, okay? I can run it as a just like I can run it as a recommendation microservice. Then we can some some feature you can run as a review microservices. Then some can be product microservices. So, so something like that. So what we are doing, we are just chopping down that three services that were running inside your application. So we are just chopping and making it run separately, so that. Uh, there will be no there no, will not be any confusions or there will uh, if there is some error let's say uh, recommendation service some somehow fails so that will not cause an issue to your uh, video playback service so in that way you are just trying to make sure that your application is running fine it is available always and then the next thing that i'm mentioning is it will be more easier to manage these services uh, as a uh, as a single service rather than uh, managing the complete application so microservices is nothing uh, but so microservice so what is that this thing is finished what is microservice chopping down chopping down the multiple services multiple services of single application single application to gain the application reliability and maintain each service separately okay so microservices is nothing but one architecture that uh, uh, we are using nowadays so we are just chopping down multiple services of single application and we get the application reliability and also we can maintain each service separately so that if even if the one service is down you can still access the uh, other part of your application okay and that way all the feature improvement and everything will be uh, properly done for that okay so this is what a microservices now we have already learned about uh, what is container right we have already run about what is container so container is nothing but a linux process linux process so what we will do we will run each microservice as a container okay we will run each microservice as a container and how kubernetes help uh, will help 
so as kubernetes is a orchestration tool orchestration tool it will help in managing those services managing those microservices microservices hey viewers trying to get into devsecops and all for our DevSecOps certified professional programs and earn the certification that shows you are fit for these technical roles and requirements. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. You running as a container. Okay. So this is how uh, the uh, Kubernetes is playing a role here. Like how uh, it is doing. Uh, so as I mentioned, what is container? Container is a Linux process. And each microservice, what is microservice? We have already discussed. So each microservice will will run as a container or a pod. Uh, and then Kubernetes orchestration will uh, tool uh, is the orchestration tool. It will help to manage those microservices running as a container or what I will see in Kubernetes store running as a pod. I will say. Okay. So that is about like what is a microservice and uh, what is uh, how Kubernetes is helping uh, in uh, implementing those microservices architecture. Okay. So now since we have got uh, understanding about microservices, let's go ahead and discuss each component uh, in details. Okay. So first of all, let's understand the Kubernetes nodes and its components so that we have discussed that it will have some. Uh, uh, Let's first discuss about the Kubernetes master or the control plane. So in control plane, there will be let's say multiple master nodes, and in worker plane, uh, there will be multiple worker nodes. Okay. So how to decide the master node? So that is one question. Uh, so when I'm mentioning about the cluster, so when I'm mentioning about the cluster, so I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is. Yes, this is my sorry for that. Yeah. So this is my let's say this is my cluster. Let me just say it as a cluster. So now this cluster will have multiple nodes, as I mentioned. So it will have multiple nodes. Okay. Now, if I if you think of uh, something like this like the left part that i have already drawn is a master or control plane okay so you can think this as a master plane or you can say control no control plane control plane and here if you have let's say some more servers so these are all nodes actually so let's say these are two nodes so you can say think of this as a This as a worker node. So this we have already seen all those things like what is control plane, what is worker plane, worker plane. Okay. Now this is node one, node two, node three, and so as I mentioned, this can be also called as a master node, right? So it is master one, then it is a master two, master two. And then it is master three, master three. So all those three are like three masters, and those three are replicas of each other. Okay. So so why we are uh, just deploying three servers here? So I'll get to that point uh, real quickly. But uh, uh, just you have to understand this master one, master two, and master two are nothing but replicas of each other. That means all the data in the master one uh, should be concurrent with master two, master three. So this, those, those are like replicas of each other. So that even if master one goes down, your cluster should be running. Uh, okay. So why I choose uh, the three master? That is uh, that I will uh, I'll just explain. And now these are the worker plane. In worker plane, there will be like worker nodes, worker nodes. Okay. Worker nodes, worker node one, worker node one, and this is. Worker node two, worker node two. Okay, so we have two workers. Now this worker one and worker node two are not a replica of each other. Okay, they are not a replica of each other, but they are just uh, uh, servers that we are running to uh, run the pods. Okay, 
and now how high availability is maintained in uh, on the application level that we will discuss later but for now let me explain you why i am uh, creating the replicas for master and why only i am creating three replicas okay so so let's just create uh, one more thing here let's just create so so as i mentioned master nodes uh, we are using the replica system and we are using three replica system okay so there is something called as quorum quorum and this quorum is nothing but uh, the it has some formula that is n by 2 plus minus 1 okay so what is n by 2 so when i'm saying i have three server when i'm saying i have i am using three server right when i'm saying i am using three server three master nodes so n equal to 3 uh, is what i am mentioning right so n equal to 3 is what i am mentioning so what will be the quorum for that so that means 3 divided by 2 minus 1 so you are 3 divided by 2 minus 1 will be uh, uh, 3 divided by 2 minus 1 so 1 point uh, one, 0 okay so that means sorry this should be plus 1 okay so quorum means uh, let's divide it by 3 so 3 divided by 2 is 1 point something 1 point something plus 1 so that means plus 1 okay equal to 2 so that means what this thing means whenever i want a running instance of you of my cluster so at least two nodes should be available so that means even if one node goes down my application my cluster should be will be working uh, uh, fine okay now let's do uh, let uh, let's consider if n equal to 4 is there so what will happen 4 divided by 2 that means 2 plus 1 so that means you will have to run the three three servers okay you will have to run the three servers out of four to run the cluster properly okay now let's consider why we are not going with the odd number so even if you think when uh, you are taking four nodes even that also when, uh, when you are taking four nodes even if one node goes down then only you are facing uh, the issue like uh, the uh, if two nodes goes down then your cluster will be only in, in read only mode okay if only one node goes down that will your cluster will run but same is the hey viewers are you looking for formal training on sre practices take our sre program this course will teach you how to successfully implement site reliability engineering in the modern day 24 into 7 services Kickstart your SRE training today. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. Is for three nodes. So that means in in terms of high availability, if I take if I create the three nodes and one node goes down, the cluster will be available. Now let's consider this thing n equal to five. N equal to five means uh, let's consider we have five master nodes. So five master node divided by two, so it will be around two plus one. So that means three. Okay. So now you can see that even if two nodes are down, even if two nodes are down, the cluster will run fine. Okay, even if two nodes are down, the cluster will run fine. But if I take n equal to six, that means six nodes. Okay, and six divided by two is three. Three plus one four. So that means if two nodes are down, two nodes are down, the cluster will still run. But you you have to. Uh, uh, you have to get this point that even when i am running five nodes i am getting the same availability that means with five nodes if two nodes are down i am able to run the uh, cluster proper with six nodes also if two nodes are down then i am able to run the uh, uh, cluster properly so in that way why would i uh, waste extra one node just for high availability because anyway uh, when uh, the the quorum point is same for both of the uh, both of the nodes so I won't be uh, I won't be uh, wasting one more node, right? So similar is case for three and four. So if even if I uh, create a cluster with four master nodes, and if if uh, let's say more than uh, more than uh, like uh, more than one is down, then your uh, uh, then your uh, uh, server is uh, then your cluster will go down. Okay, uh, it will go in read only mode. So to so that is why every time we we, we take uh, n as a odd number so that means when you want to create the replicas for your master you will take n equal to 3 n equal to 5 n equal to 7 something like that so in that way uh, in in less number of nodes you are uh, able to have a more high availability 
so this is about a quorum concept though is it is not very much required but i wanted to explain you why i am using or uh, the three nodes here so uh, so this is a formula so that means every time you want to run the cluster so n by 2 plus 1 nodes must be run so that that way for three three nodes it will be 3 by 2 that is 1 plus 1 so that means two 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 nodes should be run for four for a cluster where there are four master nodes still you need three uh, master nodes to be run so uh, this uh, even number won't uh, help us so that's why we are going, going with the odd number so that is a basic concept about quorum you can read more on the internet like what is quorum and why we require but this is a concept uh, uh, required for high availability so yeah that is the thing uh, about this particular master node so now so what i was trying to tell you so once we understood it so there can be multiple master node as i have explained you now let's uh, learn about yeah so th this is the control plane that i am mentioning right so control plane as, as I, I, I had drawn there is a control plane and there is a worker plane so i had already explained uh, that uh, the control plane have some component so those are like api server the controller manager uh and then you have some etcd and scheduler so let's go ahead and learn about more about what these components are okay so first component that we are mentioning is the cube, cube api server okay so let's consider one classic example here let's consider one classic example here and with that example you are able to understand uh, what is happening uh, inside the kubernetes cluster okay so let's consider there is uh, one developer there is one developer uh, who will be deploying the deploying the application deploying the application inside your cluster so what will happen this particular developer will use some command line tool he'll use some commands okay he'll use some commands to reach to your cluster okay to reach to your cluster so let's go ahead and create some cluster here okay so what happens when this developer guy tries to uh, run some command so what commands like uh, let's say the command is kubectl get pods so just like you run the docker ps command and you get the pod uh, container output to get a container output inside your kubernetes cluster you have to run kubectl get pods so let's say this developer guy runs this uh, command then what will happen so as i mentioned uh, the uh, anything relevant to the management will will go through th through your master node or a control plane node so this command whatever he has uh, he is trying to uh, run will generate one a a p api get request okay so if in in kubernetes everything runs on api request okay so it will generate one api request now this api request will first uh, hit on your mass any of your master node using load balancer so let's consider uh, so what happens when you when you run this command so first component that we are discussing here is api server okay so what what is this component and what it will do <coughs> so whenever this uh, developer is running this kubectl get pod it the request hits on some master and on that master uh, you will have that api server now what this api server do so first thing is so we are trying to understand understand the master uh, master node components components and we what we are trying to understand is first component is api server api api server and as i mentioned what is the job of this api server so when the request hits here when the request hits here so this api server performs two tasks okay this performs two tasks and what are those tasks so first task is uh, authentication authentication and second part is 
authorization so what is this thing let me explain you what is this thing in part is authorization okay so what is it performs it performs two tasks first of all authentication and second part is authorization now what is authentication and what is authorization so authentication means checking if the user is a valid user valid user and available in inside the cluster okay so first thing is so what is authentication when you try to log in on let's say on your facebook account so what happens when you try to log in on your facebook account you give some username you give some password now let's say you don't have any account and you try to uh, give some username random username so what facebook will say facebook will say this user does not exist so what it is doing it is authenticating you so authentication is a process wherein uh, the uh, the it checks if the user is valid or not if the user is valid then the authentication is successful if user is not valid the authentication fails now what is the authorization so authorization means how much how much access how much access the authenticated user should have should have so that means thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today